It's Feedback Gaming. Back for another overview of another Paradox Dev Diary for Hearts of Iron 4 for the upcoming expansion, Man the Guns, version 1.6. And here are a bunch of things that are going to be included free of charge in 1.6 in the Ironclad free update. Here we go. Faction Leadership. So, have you been in the situation where the USA has become a lot more powerful and kind of swamped UK and you want the US to take control of the alliance? I guess the first question is, why would you want that? But, regardless, you can do that now. Under certain conditions, you can take control of the alliance and become the leader of the faction based on certain attributes. Uh, have more than twi twice deployed manpower of the faction leader. Have more than 150% of the factories of the faction leader to qualifications for USA. Be in every war that the faction leader currently will be in, which more than likely will be if you are in the Allies, for instance, and not having been capitulated already. So, when I first read this, my first thought was, why would we need this? And then there's a few things that cropped up. So, have you ever been in this scenario where you've tried to eliminate the Allies as Germany, for instance, and then all of a sudden, there'll be a weird faction member that'll become the leader, something like New Zealand or South Africa? Um, it's because they've been demoted. So basically, the UK's capitulated, who was the ex-leader, and then the leadership is given to somebody else. I don't know how it's calculated, but it seems to just give it, just seems, almost seems like it gives it just randomly to another member of the Alliance. It's kind of annoying, because then you have to go through the world, like, taking out these little tiny small nations, because they classed as major powers, even though New Zealand might only have, like, 20 factories, for instance. So there's a possibility in that scenario, what could happen is, I don't know, another major country, such as Australia, Canada, India, or China, who's part of the Allies, who are significantly larger and stronger because they've got more deployed manpower, more factory power, they can take leadership of that alliance. Just one thing to note too, is it does cost you 200 political power, and it can only be done once 180 days. So this idea of the AI constantly trading between each other, who's going to get it, is unlikely to happen, because there is a cooldown of 180 days. So... See, even with me telling you this and the knowledge of the AI sometimes messing around and creating this weird alliance with the minor power as the leader, why would you want to do this? So, they haven't revealed this in this specific dev diary, but there will be bonuses or abilities that will be unique to faction leaders that faction leaders can execute. What will they do? I have no idea. Completely speculating. But there needed to be an incentive to be a faction leader and to spend 200 political power and get something for that other than just well the, the reason that you're the leader basically um yeah i don't know guys speculate in the comments below what do you think you're going to gain from that it has been confirmed it's in one of the comments on this thread uh, that podcat has announced that there are going to be extra bonuses for being the faction leader it feels to me like it's almost going to be some like some continuous focus that bon benefits everyone in the faction that could be it there could be some, some new ability point power or command power that you can use and give to other members of the Alliance. Or maybe you have the ability to build infrastructure for other members of your Alliance. That would kind of make sense because there would be no those issues where you'll land into Normandy and you'll be repairing constantly and you want someone else in the faction to help repair the infrastructure faster. Do you know what? Now think about it. Now I've said that out loud. I think that actually is going to be the case. I think you're going to have the power to build inside other faction members. And plus, some of their abilities are probably going to be roped into there. Anyway, so here you can see here, all the members that could qualify to become a faction leader. United States at 87%, France at 80%, and they could steal that leadership. Uh, also note, there was a mention that the AI uh, won't put the player in a situation where they're going to steal the leadership from the player as such. So it's unlikely you'll be in a situation where it'd be frustrating for the player because the AI will be stealing that leadership, which will just be mind-numbingly annoying. And also, you'll be giving a notification if someone else meets the qualifications to become the faction leader. So you can do something about it, like deploy a lot of crappy divisions just for the purpose of adding more manpower to stop another faction from taking over. Okay, what else have we added? Cancelable focuses. Cancelable? Cancelable focuses? So here you go. So we have the Tank Destroyer Doctrine. Hmm, Tank Destroyer Doctrine. So they haven't announced the National Focus Tree yet for the United States, but this is a new focus. Is this part of the USA Focus Tree? Or is this a continuous focus? Or is this something else they're adding in the National Focus Tree at the bottom that can be selected that are kind of like continuous focuses? I'm not sure. But the reason why they're showing this is you can cancel focuses now. 
And you can hold 10 days worth of progress. And there are some focuses that cannot be cancelled in mid-progress. And the first one I thought of when I was reading this was the Great Purge. It is the Great Purge. It's the one they choose. And you can't cancel the Great Purge manually. It has to be done. It has to be. You have to pick to it. If you pick it and you choose it, you got to stick with it. You haven't got a choice. Which makes sense, because you can't purge people and then all of a sudden bring them back to life. Because you've cancelled the focus. Makes sense. What do we have here? So we now have naval and air exercises. So as you can see, we've got a new icon for air. And that allows us to exercise aircraft. It is what it is. It, it works like training for land units. You gain XP from it. You uh, gain layer XP, which is the, the the currency at the top of the screen, which you can use to make better variants of planes, which definitely someone's going to take advantage of. You will lose planes to accidents and more likely get damaged due to reliability as well, I'm guessing. And uh, yeah, now you have the ability to exercise your aircraft. This is another buff for Germany, this, because you think about it, if they're going to be experiencing more wars, when they take on the Allies, they're going to have more experience in fighting battles and whatnot, so... You more than likely see experienced air wings. So now there's more of an incentive now to keep your air wings and stop adjusting them, stop making them smaller or bigger. Stick with the air wings that you've got and keep the experience with them, and that way they'll uh, be a lot tougher. Makes me wonder, you know, how they're going to change aces, how they're going to be calculated. Surely the ace will, aces will have different bonuses, maybe? Maybe they'll feed into experience somehow? I'm not sure. Or maybe you'll only get aces now when a, an air wing gets to a certain experience size. I'm not sure, but it's kind of cool. Also be aware that. Because they're introducing fuel, exercising now will burn fuel. So you've got to really make a, you know, got to make a good sound decision. Is it the right thing to do right now to exercise? Because I'm going to be burning potentially some planes and my total air count. And I potentially could be uh, burning fuel, which I could be needing for the actual war effort. That's gonna, this can also be done with ships as well. So as you can see here, there is a train ships icon. So now you can do something with ships other than just sticking them in the ocean. Put them on escort duty and forgetting about them. We know that this expansion pack is going to be an overhaul to the way naval combat works. And this is the first kind of sneaky peek that we've seen in, uh, well, the differences they're making to naval combat. I mean, we know that you can exercise them now, which is going to burn fuel and potentially damage. That's something I never thought of. Yeah, you could be dam damaging the actual craft themselves, aren't you? Because you can't, you can't have a, a full-blown ship sink, can you? It would be damaging the actual ships themselves, but it's easy to repair them, so it kind of has, doesn't really have much of a downside. Man, you'd be exercising ships all the time if you're UK or France or USA, wouldn't you? Because you've got so much, uh, you've got so much oil, so you'll have unlimited fuel, wouldn't you? Anyway, well that's it. That's pretty much the end of the dev diary. There are a few little things I just want to dip into as well. Uh, a few dev diaries back, we looked at the national focus tree for the United Kingdom. Here it is in all its glory. Beautiful, isn't it? But one point of the focus tree here is. Kind of one of those feelings of like, why would you ever want to do this? So, this part of the focus tree is mainly defensive and building up the empire as the empire there is in its kind of historical form. You look very closely here. Indian independence, develop New Zealand. There's nothing here. But, they have revealed that there is going to be something here now. You can hold an imperial conference. But the idea is you, you're building relations with the Commonwealth. You develop those nations within the Commonwealth. You hold an imperial conference, and then finally you form an imperial federation. So, to make a comparison, this is kind of like the Millennium Dawn mod, and you form the EU. So the way it works is you get all the nations in the Commonwealth to agree to it, and then you simultaneously form a super nation, a federation of Commonwealths. What would this nation be called, guys? I want you guys to comment below and tell me what you think this nation would be called. The, the Imperial Federation... Oh my god, that sounds kind of Star Wars, doesn't it? Does it? Would it be the Imperial Empire? The Commonwealth Federation? The Federal Commonwealth? I'm not sure. What would you guys call this? Would it have Britain in the name? The British Federation, maybe? I don't know. It sounds very like... I feel like I played Stellaris where I keep using the word Federation. Kind of cool, though, isn't it? Uh, there's not a lot of deals revealed about this. Um, the only thing they've said is that if you can get all the members to agree to it, apart from India... You can form your federation. But there's a high chance that India, as a different member of the faction itself, may decide to decide. There's a few variables that might decide not to go ahead with it. Uh, but there's definitely a, a really cool roleplay option available there in future. Remember, guys, comment below. Let me know what you think the name of this new federal United British Empire would actually be. It'd be kind of cool. And finally, this is a screenshot from the dev diary we just looked at, but if you look really, really closely, you can see a faint outline 
of an icon here. Now, is this a new mission order or have they just scrunched up all the buttons here due to the fact that we've got a new button here and this is just a holdout order? But why would they hide it? Why would this be invisible? Hmm. Hmm. I get this impression that they must have hidden this somehow because this must be something new that they're not that's not in the base game. Then why would they hide the hold order, you know? I'm not sure. So we have patrol, search and destroy, convoy raiding and escort. And this icon here, which would usually be about here in the game placement, would be the hold order, which is just a way of telling the ships to stop moving or stand still for shore bombardment, for instance. So it makes me think there's either one thing going on. They've just added this extra training icon and pushed all the buttons together. And that's the hold icon. Or they're hiding some new kind of mission order that Navy can do. Interesting. I don't know. Maybe there's some kind of evasive order maybe now. So a way of avoiding combat. See, I am just making complete shots in the dark here. I have absolutely no clue. But after that, guys, that's the end of the Dev Diary. Any suggestions, anything you're particularly excited about, please comment below. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed Dev Diaries, don't forget to like and comment below with any suggestions in future. It really does help out make more of these kind of videos. But after that, guys, hope you have a good day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.